We welcome you inside Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee, where the undefeated and nationally ranked volunteers take on in-state rival Chattanooga. The mocks coming in at three and two. Mike Morgan alongside Damian Fishback. Great to be with you here on a Monday evening. And tonight, you will see one of the best backcourts in the SEC. Yeah, I think these two guys feel like they are the best backcourt. One leads the SEC with eight and a half assists a game, but you can tell by the video, he can still get buckets. On the other side, one of the best two guards in the nation, 57% behind the three-point line. Third in the SEC, he is shooting with a lot of confidence and really picking up where Admiral Schofield, Grant Williams, Bone, and Alexander left off last year. Some of the numbers on Bowden are insane. 57% from downtown. You see the total numbers combined for the two guards. Lamonte Turning, Turner leading the SEC in assists combined. They're combining for 39% of Tennessee's points, 50% of their steals, 55% of their assists. They have far and away been leading the way, and that's the guy who's going to lead the way for the Mox, David Jean Baptiste, the junior from Miami. Well, what you'll love about his basketball game is his ability to show his versatility. He can knock it down from the perimeter, even though he struggled last game against the outstretched defenders of Florida State. He went 0-4, but he really did a nice job of getting to the basket, which is what I think he's going to have to do tonight to break down the stingy defense of the Volunteers. Tennessee fans will not take this game for granted. This is a proud mid-major program in Chattanooga. The last time they met, Turner and Bowden were freshmen, and Chattanooga won the game 82-69. to In fact, they've won a couple of them in the last decade. Chattanooga always comes to play. Took an hour and 45 minute bus ride to get over here. I would like to pull off an upset that they will not soon forget. Rick Barnes, the head coach of Tennessee, coming off back to back NCAA tournament appearances, trying to see exactly what he's got with this year's unit. Again, they lose Williams and Schofield. Those two were the, really the pulse of the resurgence of this Tennessee basketball program. Mox win the opening tip. We are underway in Knoxville. When speaking with Coach Paris, the head coach of the Chattanooga Mox, he said this Tennessee team can be just as good as last year's Tennessee team. A very difficult statement that he made. Rod Johnson with a little jump hook shot for the first points of the night. A 6'7", 200 pound red shirt junior averaging double figures and it's a nice job of him getting it inside early. You mentioned the two guards, and here's one of them firing a three that rims off. Eves Pons now in his junior season has really elevated his play averaging 15 points a night. Yeah, Mike, I, I thought in the Washington game that Pons and Fulkerson were the two guys that really stood out the most to me, just how much they improved. Tough shot by Matt Ryan, who we saw last year donning a Vanderbilt Commodores uniform. He's with his third team now in his final year and has played very well so far for the Mox. Yeah, Coach Paris talked about Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan was actually on the Notre Dame team that beat Coach Paris uh, when he was at Wisconsin to go to the Elite Eight. He's looking for Matt Ryan to be a leader here tonight on the road. Turner finds Bowden on a three. Woo! And that man continues to be flammable. 57% from downtown coming in, and he knocks down one here. I like that, Mike Morgan. Flammable, right? Allen Houston like, Chris Lofton like for Tennessee fans. You're bringing back some names now. Tennessee up by a point, quick hands. The steal by the freshman, Josiah James, all the way. And all ball, jump ball, and the arrow will favor the Volunteers. Good call that time by Jason Baker. And look at this pass. Uh, if you're Baptiste on that particular possession, you have to know the scouting report. You have to be there on the catch with Jordan Bowden. He is shooting as good as anyone in the Southeastern Conference right now. Ball comes in to Fulkerson, another guy who's really stepped up his game now in his junior year, averaging 10. Point seven rebounds a game. Turn around a runner off the mark. Yeah, offense a little discombobulated that time for Tennessee. And they're still developing their chemistry this year. A lot of production from a year ago. Great take. That's some of the nifty ball handling by David Jean Baptiste. Not just a three-point shooter. He's good on the handle. Talk about what Tennessee lost. Jordan Bone, very productive point guard. Mm -hmm. Of course, 
As you see, Bowden hit another jumper. When you talk about Williams and Schofield, Damian, then those are two guys that were such a great one-two punch for a number of years. Yeah, well, and I think Jordan Bowden is going to have to be that guy on the team. He and Turner, but Bowden is going to have to be consistently getting up points. As you see the turnover that time uh, by the Mox, I, I think for Bowden, he's going to have to be that guy, kind of like Maxey has to be that guy at Kentucky. Uh, you look at Anthony Edwards at Georgia. There's some teams in which they need guys to be productive, and you see the production increase by Bowden as he's been at Tennessee. Pops flips it over to Turner. Whip pass down over to Fulkerson, knocked out of bounds. It will remain Tennessee ball. Okay, Mike, this is early. It's early in the game, but uh, Coach Barnes had lost his voice a little bit. And sometimes when the coach is not at 100%, the team doesn't. You see Coach Rick Barnes, you'll see it on the other end. He's already up, already a little bit more active. He sees that the team is not as sharp, doesn't have the same bounce that they had early in the season like the Washington game. Turner left it short. Tennessee's biggest win, of course, thus far in this 4-0 start. The win over nationally ranked Washington. And legal screen set by the box. There you see head coach Rick Barnes, 32 seasons. A win tonight would pull him within three of 700. 24 NCAA appearances, a final four while coaching Texas. And, of course, taking this job over at a time where Tennessee basketball was laboring a bit and built it kind of from scratch and now back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments. Well, I don't know if there's a coach that does it better in this game. He does it the right way with humility, but always keeps his hunger as well. The epitome of what a coach is in college basketball today's day. Chattanooga, three turnovers in their last four possessions. This is Ryan up top, guarded by Pons. Steps up for a deep three. Bowden clears it. Off and running. Finds his backcourt mate, Turner. Inside, Pons, bellied up by Ryan. That's where Tennessee has to improve, Mike Morgan. I've yet to see, outside of Fulkerson uh, a little bit in the year, consistent inside presence from anyone for Tennessee. Most of it's off of cuts, curling, going to the basket, and perimeter shooting. Turner, late clock, line pass to Pons. And Pons is caught in a moccasin sandwich, just throws it away. And that'll bring us to our first timeout. 15.40 to go, first half. Tennessee 5, Chattanooga 4. Tennessee trying to make it 5-0 with an early 5-4 lead against the Moccasins of Chattanooga as we welcome you back inside Thompson Bowling Arena. Mike Morgan alongside the former sharpshooter from Auburn, Damian Fishback. And Damian, that time of year now, we've got a little more of a sample size to start feeling out just what we're looking at in the SEC. The new polls came out today, four teams yep. nationally ranked. Tennessee, of course, is one of them. When you look at this Tennessee team top to bottom, where do you think they stack up? Well, that's a good question because there's nine in the SEC, Mike, uh, that are receiving votes. And so I think it's truly wide open. With that being said, Tennessee has made an extremely strong statement early with that win over Washington. But I'll tell you this, the team that's going to end up as an SEC champion, as one of the best teams in the Southeastern Conference, is not there today. Just like Kentucky, who took that loss against Evansville. Auburn, the question is, have they truly been tested yet? I just left and had a chance to see Florida, who really bounced back from a couple of early losses. It's the teams who are getting better every time they step in between the lines. Those are the teams that are going to end up on top at the end of the year. I would be surprised if LSU doesn't make it back to the top 25. You mentioned yep. Florida, who you just saw in Charleston. They are starting to gel with those newcomers, the freshmen in particular, and Blackshear, the transfer from Virginia Tech. It should be another deep year, 15 bids to the NCAA tournament the last two seasons from the SEC, and no reason to believe there won't be at least seven again this year. You going to stop at seven, Mike? I'm not stopping at seven, at least seven. <laughs> I'm not putting the cap on it yet. I'm going to say fewer than 14. I know you've been spending some time with Pat Bradley, so yeah, fewer than 14. Yes, yes. I, I'm as optimistic as anybody. I, I try to add a little bit of reality there since Turner knocks down a three-pointer. That's a good sign when Lamonte Turner is hitting shots from outside. We know he can pass. Yeah, we do. Uh, 
I'll say this, though. What I've seen very early from Tennessee is their inside presence is going to be off of the bounds. It's going to be off of curls and drives. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see. They've got VCU coming up. They've got Florida State coming up. Let's see if the mocks try to make them beat them from inside out with some type of post presence tonight. Pull up jumper off the mark. Fulkerson rips down the rebound. Tennessee up by four. Jalen Johnson in the game for Tennessee, number 13. And he will not get it instead of Bowden. And the legal screen called on Tennessee. That's been a point of emphasis the last few years, and we see another one called here. That'll be on Fulkerson. Chattanooga led by Lamont Paris now in his third season with the program. Longtime assistant under Bo Ryan at Wisconsin. In fact, seven years in Madison. He told us he still stays in touch with Coach Ryan, or the former coach, I should say, enjoying retirement. Pretty good guy to learn from during his time as an assistant there. Well, you can see that in the way that uh, his team continues to play. He wants to be more like the Bo Ryan defense, the Tony Bennett defense now of Virginia. That's what he talked about before the game. He said if they are to stay in this basketball game tonight, they got to be decent offensively, but this is the end. They've got to get stops, bear down defensively, and play with a lot of heart and character. Ponds faces up on Ryan. Wheels, deals, and finger rolls it in. Pretty move. Okay, go back to the basket, Ian Ponds. I'm sorry. Now he's had the body since he arrived on campus. I mean, he is just chiseled. <laughs> yes. But now he's got some game to go along with that physique. Good defense there. Forces the miss by Matt Ryan. This is Johnson. Pods through the hands of Fulkerson. And knocked out of bounds with 13 to shoot. You can tell, Mike, two teams still getting comfortable offensively. Matt Ryan, I think he needs to do more of this. He has good size in the interior at 6'7", 215. And then Eve Pons right back at you, young fella, going inside with the up and under. The ability to establish an inside presence, and particularly with the back to the basket, always elevates your offense because the best shots, I think, are taken when the ball goes inside and out. Shot clock at five. Baseline jumper is true for the freshman Josiah Jordan James out of Charleston. Yeah, he's one of the incredible freshmen that we have in this conference. You think of Anthony uh, Edwards, you think of Isaac Poro, Tyrese Maxey, amongst the other freshmen at Kentucky. I think Josiah Jordan James is another freshman that as he continues to go through the year, he will continue to blossom in this league. First Tennessee McDonald's All-American since Tobias Harris back Ooh. in 2010. Up top, three on the way, off the mark. And it's Kamwa, the freshman out of Finland. Skip pass into the corner, pump fake. Ryan lets him go by, and then misfires. I don't mind that shot, though, by the Mox. A good look if you're Matt Ryan, maybe take a bounce and go for the mid-range jump shot, though. Bowden has it kick off the iron. Under 12 minutes to go, Tennessee up by six. Mike, Coach Paris told his team to slow it down. Right, not wanting to get into a track meet. The horses for Tennessee, more athletes, longer, a little bit more talented, wants to make this a possession game. Mox have missed six out of the last seven field goals. Into the corner, sets up a three ball. They fire up about 10 a game. They make, I should say, about 10 a game. They fire up much more than that. They are not shy from behind the arc. Yeah, when I asked Coach Paris before the game, because they like to shoot threes, how he thought the line being uh, back to uh, another foot or so, how that would affect his team. He said for the marginal shooters, the shooters that aren't that consistent and try to hug the line, they will struggle. And right now, the mocks have been struggling early. Give credit, Tennessee with a six-point lead. A little under 11 minutes left to go. The mocks down. We'll see if they're out. Damian Fishback, Mike Morgan, back with you in Knoxville. Volunteers on top of in-state rival Chattanooga, 12 to 6. What do we know about the mocks? Well, pretty proud tradition, particularly in the sport, 
of basketball. How about Gerald Wilkins? Many years with the New York Knicks. There he is working on the doctor. I wonder how that actually ended. Did he get the puck or did Doc block the shot? Of course, T.O., Terrell Owens, not just a great football player for Chattanooga. He was shining on the hardwood as well. Also ran track and field, a three-sport guy back in the early to mid-90s. And a proud tradition overall, Johnny Taylor. First-round draft pick of the Orlando Magic in 1997. They play in the Southern Conference. Made a number of NCAA tournaments. And a team that, again, has had some success against the Volunteers. In fact, a couple of victories in the last decade here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, and, and from a character standpoint, from the quality of individuals, team had a 3.0 GPA. So that's not a member of the team, the team itself, to show you what type of standard they are holding academic-wise. Uh, you can tell that the administration is happy uh, with Coach Paris already giving him an extension, which helps them for recruiting, which gives them uh, more camaraderie as far as the team, knowing there's going to be some cohesion and consistency with the coach being there. So he's building a program, and I think the administration is going to give him time to do Last NCAA tournament for the Mox 2016, they lost to Indiana as the number 12 seed. They made it to the Sweet 16 right after TOF back in 1997. Such a critical possession coming out of this timeout here. You didn't have to get a basket, but you need a solid look. Just three for 11 from the field. Caldwell takes it strong. Knocked out of bounds, and it will be Mox basketball with one on the shot clock. Well, and this can be even more dangerous than if you just missed a shot and it went out of bounds because for the Mox, what you don't want is uh, something that happens quick that, that allows a turnover and the Volunteers get out to the open break. Baseline shot, return to center. Center, I should say, E. Pons. <laughs> e. Pons, who actually is second of the SEC, 2.8 blocks. He adds another one here. Well, I can't tell you how many times he's been part of a highlight, whether it was in the Washington game uh, with dunks or, or, or getting ducked on, possibly, or going up for a block this time last year against Gonzaga. He's one of the most exciting players that you'll see in the SEC. The man who was born in Haiti moved to France after being adopted at the age of four. Different player in this is junior campaign. Look at that. Nice shot there by James, the freshman from Charleston. Yeah, has such a big body. You talk about bodies, right? You talked about Eve Ponds coming in like that. Josiah Jordan James, 6'6", 208 pounds, solid as a freshman. He was missed almost all of October, was hampered by a hip groin injury. Mm -hmm. He's trying to work his way back, get to 100% health. Commander misfires straight away. That's tough. They're just daring him to shoot it. James, whose father played basketball at Michigan State. Threw it at Ponza's knees. Vila. Bullish in the paint, jump hook shot off the mark. Top floor for the rebound is James. Like that look for the box. If, you, if you're Vila, you just have to converge on that particular play. And Josiah Jordan James called for the offensive foul with that shoulder, the big body. Tennessee fans don't like it. What's your thoughts, Mike? Honestly, I don't have a problem with the call. If you <laughs> <laughs> I think he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. He'll learn from that. Yeah. And again, they're, especially this time of year, they're calling plays like that, freedom of movement. We see more and more whistles trying to make it more of a finesse game, which I think overall has made the game better. Well, it's a break for Chattanooga, who's 0 of 8 in the last eight field goals. Matt Ryan's trying to post up a small Lamonte Turner. They couldn't get the basketball to him. Has been pretty quiet. Gene Baptiste needs to heat up. That's not going to do it. Shot rejected. Too much one on one right now for the Mox. You have to work cohesively. No screens being set. You need to be attached 
five guys working cohesively as one unit. That's one thing I love about this Tennessee team. Coach Rick Barnes, he runs outstanding sets, which is why you'll see a lot of people try to play the volunteer zones. Devontae Gaines will check in for Josiah Jordan James. Gaines, another freshman out of Buffalo, New York. His teammates gave him the nickname Big Ticket in high school. He recorded, listen to this, three quadruple doubles as a high school senior. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's why they call him Big Ticket, Big right? Big Ticket. What was the best nickname for Damian Fishback back in the day? I really have one, but I would have taken Big Ticket too. <laughs> We're going to find Fish a nickname with 10-point lead, Tennessee in the lead. What about this guy right here? Can we change his nickname? We're going to make it his nickname, too. Jordan, big ticket bout with the mid-range jumper. I like it. On Friday, we've got a men's hoops doubleheader for you right here on the SCC Network and the ESPN app. Number nine, Kentucky hosting UAB at Rupp. At 7 o'clock Eastern time, and then we'll take it to Gainesville. Marshall taking on the Red Hot Florida Gators. Fresh off their championship in Charleston, knocking off Xavier last night in the championship game. That's a fun game to watch. Florida holding on late in that ball game. Came down to the final couple possessions. Speaking of the Gators, Keontae Johnson, the SEC Player of the Week, averaging 16 and 8. And Scotty Pippen Jr. Freshman of the week for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Vanderbilt playing an exciting brand of basketball. Aaron Neesmith has been lighting it up for the Commodores as well. Absolutely. He's a pro as well as Scotty Lewis, a freshman that I forgot to mention a while ago for Florida. I'm anxious to see how those teams continue to improve, as does Matt Ryan coming out of that timeout. Huge shot for the Mox, Mike. First field goal for the Mox in over six minutes. Foul on the floor. Fulkerson got grabbed, so Tennessee will maintain it. 7.24 to go, first half. Before the game, I asked Coach Paris of Chattanooga, I said, uh, what's the key to you winning this basketball game? And, you know, he, he mentioned how well Virginia plays, how they're holding teams with 40, 50 points, 30 points. And he said, our biggest challenge with Tennessee, I think, is completing the defensive possession with the rebound. Unfortunately for them, they're getting out rebounded by plus 11 right now. They have to be better. Almonte Turner drains the triple. Turner coming in, shooting 20% from three. He's got six points. So plus 11 is plus five. And right now, Tennessee looking pretty efficient on the offensive end. They even though they only have 19 points here early. Both on the floor. They're going to play a lot of minutes this year. Right now, Rick Barnes trying to figure out who else he can have the long minutes at the point guard spot or even the two guard spot. Good hustle there by Fulkerson, but it's scooped up by the Mox. They whip it around. Gene Baptiste with an open look. And a fresh possession. Shot clock resets to 20, and Ryan draws the foul on the floor. First foul on Pons. It's one of the new rules this year in college basketball on an offensive rebound, the shot clock resets to 20 instead of 30. I like the rule. I do too, but I think it's one of the reasons why college scoring is down along with the three-point line being extended. These are still college basketball players, right? There's no James Harden and Steph Curry's uh, you know, LeBron James is out here, Kawhi Leonard. It's still harder for these guys to create their shot as quickly. They're still learning how to do that. Three to shoot. And <laughs> off the window and in. Maurice Commander, the sophomore from Chicago, wills that one in the basket. Wasn't too hard for him to create that shot, was it? Chattanooga wanted it over and back. Side jump hook shot rims off weak side rebound Caldwell. Here come the Mox alley you pass and stepping on the baseline is Vila. 
Yeah, Villa was telling Matt Ryan to throw the bounce pass. And look, I've always heard I'd rather be lucky than good any day. I don't know if he called bank on that jump shot, but it looked good going in. Fulkerson tried to hit the cutter, but off his knee, that was Kamwa who couldn't handle it. Mike, one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot of turnovers inside with the interior passing of Tennessee, one, because they have a very unselfish team, which is awesome. But two, you don't have that Grant Williams or Admiral Schofield that when they get it inside, they're hunting for that basket. Steal by the freshman Pember, and then Turner lost it. Ryan ahead of the pack. Beautiful. Gliding with the left hand, banks it home. He's got seven, and all of a sudden, Chattanooga has made it a six point game. Well, you mentioned the word gliding, and that's exactly what he did. He used the basketball and shaded himself to where the defender couldn't get in front of him. Outstanding job by Matt Ryan. Bowden, pretty move off the curl, mid range pull up. He's blue collar, isn't he? He's blue collar, and his, his game has evolved. When you think of what Turner and Bowden were a couple of years ago compared to what they look like right now, just different players. Well, he's a testament to being patient, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those guys, there's so many guys that like to transfer when things don't go their way. As you see Commander knocking down another mid-range jump shot. But sometimes you just have to wait and pay your dues until your opportunity presents itself. Turner around the ball screen. Here's that situation you're talking about. They become a perimeter team, which is okay when Bowden's hitting everything. <laughs> well, listen, he's a guy that you have to trail. You have to be there on the catch. We mentioned that earlier. Some guys, you have to force them to put it on the floor. Bowden's one of those guys that's shooting it with so much confidence, you almost have to block his shot to make him miss. 11 points already for Jordan Bowden. Inside the... Uh, off the mark, Fulkerson harassing him on that shot. Tennessee reminds me of Virginia a little bit. They kind of just lull you to sleep. So efficient on the offensive end, continue to get multiple stops until they get hot defensively, and then all of a sudden, it's an eight, nine, ten point lead. Quick shot off the glass by Olivier Akamwa. Akamwa. Cameroon. Right now, we mentioned that Tennessee looked like Virginia. That wasn't Virginia like. Miscommunication that time defensively. Outstanding job by Baptiste. You know, talking with Rick Barnes, shoot around today. One thing he kept going back to is that, you know, we're still learning. We're still getting better at everything. That's right. They lost a lot of production from last year with Bone, Williams, Schofield. Remember Williams was the two-time SEC Player of the Year. That's not easy to replace. I agree. Caldwell that time saved the possession, making sure he was there for Jordan Bowden on the catch. And right now, these two teams fighting. Neither one really wanting to give up right now. You see the steal here. Matt Ryan staying in front of Bowden, not letting him get around, using his body to protect. And then Jordan Bowden, you know what I'm going to do to you on this end, buckets. Combined 17 points for Tennessee, who leads it by eight. Of course, that duo is going to be pressed into action much more this year because when you lose the likes of these three, Jordan Bone, Admiral Schofield, Grant Williams, three guys now who are playing pro ball, three guys that were so productive the last couple of years for the Volunteers. You can't just replace that, Damian. You've got to go ahead and try to spread it out a little bit and see how you can adapt without those guys. I mean, look at the numbers of Williams, Schofield, and Bowen. When you add all that up, I mean, quick math here, that's nearly 50 points a game, several rebounds. These were high efficiency players as well. Well, and you see this as part of the resurgence of the SEC, right? Tennessee was nowhere close to this, having this many guys go to the NBA. And you look across the SEC, 70 players from the SEC schools were on the 2019-2020 NBA Open Day roster. 
all 14 SEC schools were represented and at least one SEC player was on 26 of the 30 NBA rosters. That wasn't happening a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So you have to give credit to the administration, the commissioner, Sankey, everyone involved changing the perception and the ending result for this league. 70% of the scoring gone, 65% of the rebounding gone for Tennessee. That's the task at hand for Rick Barnes in this group. Shot clock at eight. Bowden. To Turner. Going to have to launch. He punched just off with his time in a little bit. We almost saw something spectacular, didn't we? He had his shoulders on the rim, it looked like. <laughs> Goodness. How about the mocks? Game could have been over. It could have gotten out of hands a few minutes ago, but they have continued to plug away. And they're doing it without their leading scorer. That man, Gene Baptiste, having a very good half. He's only got four. Final 90 seconds of the first half, and there's a three ball knocked down by Kamwa. He's got five. Well, Kamwa, I think, has a very high ceiling. 6'8", 224 pound freshman, very efficient. I think as he continues to get more time, more minutes, he's going to continue to blossom on this team. Gene Baptiste now just forcing the issue. Tennessee waiting him. Open three for Pons. He's improved his outside shooting immensely this year. Ryan. In and out. In and out. And I think the Mons wanted some type of goal to me, uh, for against Tennessee. Caldwell draws a whistle and he'll go to the line for a pair. AJ Caldwell, 6'4 sophomore from Sarasota, one of the many transfers on the roster who came from South Alabama. On Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, the SEC Nation pregame show will be in Auburn for the Iron Bowl with Laura, Marty, Marcus, Paul, and Tim as they break down everything from the gridiron to the grill. The SEC Nation presented by Regents Bank. I know one guy sitting to my right who's going to be watching that game. Absolutely. Who you got, Mike Morgan? Inquiring I minds want to go. go. I gotta go, Alabama. Al Alabama's got a lot to play for. It's okay. You don't have to apologize yeah. for your opinion now. I, I love Auburn's defense. <laughs> love their defense. Their offense. <laughs> An oxygen ball fired up by James. possession before the half if they could cut this lead to single digits it would be a huge momentum booster. Mox can essentially play for the final shot. Baptiste or Ryan are taking this shot. And Baptiste all the way rejected another force and that's how the half comes to an end. Tennessee will take a 10 point lead to intermission Jordan Bowden Leading all scores with 11 points on five of eight shooting. Coming up at the half, the resurgence of the Tennessee football program. Alyssa Lang, Marcus Spears, Greg McElroy will break that down. And then stats and highlights right here on the SEC Network. All is calm and peaceful outside here in Knoxville. Tennessee a little rowdy in that first half. Volunteers up by 10, 28 to 18, our halftime score. Mike Morgan alongside Damian Fishback. And Damian, we talked about this backcourt, one of the best in the SEC. It's going to be a whole lot of Turner and Bowden this year. Yeah. There was a whole lot of Turner and Bowden in half number one. Yeah, I'm so impressed with Lamonte Turner. I mean, he had eight assists and only one turnover. That's talking about a coach on the floor and then Bowden, the ability to go get shots anytime he wants it. Mike, I was impressed. 
And they were able to combine for a number of baskets in that first half. Bowden with 11, Turner six points and eight assists. Well, the eight assists is so impressive, but only having one turnover reminds me of early in the year where he had 14 assists and no turnovers against Murray State. But this guy is the key as well. Jordan Bowden has shown his ability to score, whether it be mid-range, whether it be from behind the new three-point line. He's going to find a place to play at the next level if he continues to shoot at the height that he's been shooting thus far this year. And we see the numbers overall. You don't see the assist totally. There you do see it at the bottom, as a matter of fact. Eight assists in half number one. Turner already leading the SEC in that category with eight and a half assists per game. And Bowden, the top three-point shooter right now in the SEC as he continues to drain them from downtown. Overall, it was not exactly a flourishing half for Tennessee offensively, just 12 of 27 from the field. They did hit four threes, just six points in the paint. And that's the big number, Damian, when we, we get used to this installment of Tennessee basketball. We're used to just being able to feed Williams <laughs> and let him go to work with the big dog work, and he'll get you buckets in the paint all night long. They don't have that luxury this year. It's going to have to happen in other ways. Well, I think that shows uh, Rick Barnes and his brilliance, right? He didn't get to 24 NCAA tournaments by not being able to change up uh, the way he cooks, depending upon the ingredients that he has as a chef or a coach in this particular instance. And now he's got some younger players. He is more guard heavy. And so he's leaning on his veteran experienced guards to produce offense. One thing the mocks are going to have to cook up is some more threes. They average eight and a half a game. They only hit one in that first half. Shot clock down to seven. Inside it goes. Nice job. Great feed and the bucket on the other end by Via. Yeah, and see, I, I think that's what they have to continue to do. They didn't turn over the basketball much. They did have six turnovers and zero assists. But if they can keep their turnovers for the game in single digits, then it doesn't allow Tennessee to get out into the open break. Ramon Vila transferred from Arizona State. Great hustle and save by Fulkerson, but into the waiting hands of Maurice Commander. Yeah, even though they didn't save the possessions, I am a huge John Fulkerson fan. Gene Baptiste just cannot find it so far tonight. Now two of nine from the field, 0 of three from downtown. Eight-point game here in Knoxville. This is Turner. And Fulkerson hit the deck. He was pushed by Ryan. We talked about not having assists in the basketball game. Well, here's a pretty one right there. Commander, tremendous vision of spotting Vila on the screen and roll. Pick and roll, the oldest player in the game and still the most efficient. You know, if these two teams met last year, we could have had Commander going up against Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That would have been worth I the like price that. of admission. I'll take that one. You <laughs> like that one? All right. Still early in the season. Turner out of three. Misfires. Right now, Chattanooga has a little bounce in their step. We talk about some of the upsets all across the country this year. Could we have another one brewing here in Knoxville, Tennessee? Ryan goes one on one and knocks it down. Nothing but net. He's got nine, and all of a sudden it's a six point game. That's a matchup that they like. Matt Ryan, 6'7, has about five inches on Lamonte Turner on the interior. Gene Baptiste just picked up his second foul. This is where Tennessee is usually pretty good at showing patience. Turner just missed Bowden there on the back cut. Fulkerson with a backdoor cut of his own. And kicked out of bounds by Ryan. Put the shot clock back at 20. Lamonte Turner, without question, the vocal leader, Rick Barnes, before the season. I continue to commend him on how well of a job he has done in relishing in the leadership role, both vocally and leading by example with his actions. Fulkerson down low, the hoop and the harm. John Fulkerson from Kingsport, Tennessee. It's been a career full of injuries, foul trouble, but this could be the year. Well, what I noticed, Mike, was before that play, 
Lamonte turned and went to focus, and he kind of got on him like he did uh, with some of his teammates in the shoot around today, as if to say, let's go, let's get it going. He told some of his teammates, let's redo that offensive execution uh, going against no defense. And so he's trying to get uh, the Tennessee Volunteer to form habits here, realizing the type of schedule they have later on in the season. By the way, you saw Fulkerson shoot that free throw left-handed. I've never seen this before. They had six lefties on the roster, Tennessee does. Six lefties. That's Got most of the SEC. That might be most in the country. Could be. You had to guard Southpaws a little different, too. Did you hate guarding them when you played? Really, it didn't make that much of a difference. I mean, wherever you shoot shooting from, that's where you have to put your <laughs> hand up, right? This is what I want to see. Can focus and score inside? Yes, he can, big fella. Like that. Back-to-back -back buckets for the 6'9 junior. Averaging 1.79 points per shot. That's pretty efficient. Take it. Inside. Block, but they're going to count it. Goal 10 called on Pons. Pons just came off the trampoline for this one. Pogo stick. Wow. Goodness gracious. Eight point game under seven minutes to play, 17 minutes to play here in Knoxville. Bounding up top. Slides it into Pons. Bowden on the return. Jacks up a three. And tapped out of bounds. It will be Tennessee basketball. So, Mike, that's something else that we don't talk about a lot as analysts, but shot selection is so important because it doesn't allow your opponent to get out and get offensive opportunities in transition. But it also allows you better offensive rebounding lanes. When the ball goes inside out, and when it changes the size of the floor, it allows the defense to get out of position. Offensive rebound. The pass was dropped and then caught by Bell. Missed the shot. Pons on the ball, had it blocked. And he'll kick it out. And a reset to Turner. Tennessee just doesn't look sharp right now. Turner wheels, deals, and gets the bucket. That's what vets do. That's what your leader does. Leading the SEC in assists, but decides to go get the basket itself. 2018 SEC oh, Sixth Man of the Year, and there is Gene Baptiste with a bucket. He's got six. Yeah, moving through traffic like a fullback on that play. And he's built like a safety. Not, did not play football in high school. Did not want to play in college, but he certainly has the bet, has the frame for it. 34-26. Our score, Turner. Shows you a little fade and fire, nothing but the bottom of the net. We've talked quite a bit about that man tonight, Lamonte Turner, one of the better point guards in the SEC, leading the league in assists. There's a lot of competition, though, if you're going to be first team all SEC point guard. This is a stacked deck. Anthony Edwards. Future lottery pick, the freshman already showing out in Athens. Ashton Hagen's terrific sophomore campaign so far. And what's not shown there, maybe the best defensive guard in the Southeastern Conference. Andrew Nemhart does it all, six foot five point guard. Don't sleep on A.J. Lawson, folks. He's a terrific talent in South Carolina. And then Kyra Lewis, now a sophomore, was the youngest player in college basketball last year as a freshman. That is a heck of a handful of guys right there. Yeah, well, I'd take any of them, quite frankly. But what, what impresses me is how the SEC has played a pivotal role in changing how they recruit guys. Look at how many guys on this screen have reclassified. And so what they've done in particular in the SEC, but all across the country, is they've gone and gotten them even a year earlier. When we talk about uh, Kyra Lewis, and then you look at the assist record, some of the older point guards in this league, Javon McCormick, are doing an outstanding job at Auburn. So many guys across the league that are being led by their point guards. No lack of point guard playing this league. Here you have Turner. He's working on a 10 assist night already, just one turnover. And that free throw makes it 10 points. So a double-double 
for Almonte Turner with over 15 minutes remaining. Tennessee extending the pressure a little bit. Tough take by Gene Baptiste in traffic. Turner, shake and bake all the way. No, Fulkerson can't get it. Wide open three. Knocked down. That's the first time we've called Jonathan Scott's name, a senior at a monument, Colorado. Jonathan Scott, 6'4", 200 pounds. Showed you his ability to knock down the jump shot. And then he just ran into a Fulkerson screen. <laughs> Trying to get the license plate number of that one. Imagine that. The averages. Scott only averages about 11 minutes per game, so that's a positive sign for Chattanooga. I'm intrigued the fact that Tennessee tried to kind of pick up the pace a little bit. And now an offensive foul away from the ball. It's going to go against Bowden. It's going to be interesting what the identity of this Tennessee team is going to be. We know what it's been the last couple of years. You would right. come and you'd you knew what you were getting. You were getting a team that was incredibly physical, a team that, you go back to last year, they led the league in scoring, they led the league in field goal percentage, second in free throw percentage, and you had the ultimate weapon down low. But you don't have Williams anymore. You are smaller, you're not as deep, you're a lot more perimeter oriented. And that being said, they're still struggling to score points so far tonight. Big win against Washington earlier. That is their trademark victory thus far. Focus on the back door, bumped and fouled. And that's why I wanted to see who else could play with their back to the basket. Mm -hmm. Teams typically like to play one way or the other, Mike, whether that's uh, getting up and down or slowing you down, defending you every possession, and, and having better shot selection like a Virginia. That's why this Tennessee team reminds me of Virginia. I anticipate as they play, whether it's Purdue or VCU or Florida State, for those teams to try to press them. It's finally here. You can download the Disney Plus app right now and start streaming the best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic ad-free and wherever and whenever you want them. For more, go to DisneyPlus.com. Six points now for Fulkerson. The lead is back to nine for the Volunteers. Sets up Johnson on a three. Rod Johnson pulls the trigger. He's got five. Yeah, beautiful penetration. It was good help by Fulkerson, but a late recover that time. Josiah Jordan James was trying to guard two men. That one went right through the hands of Kamwa. Mox just hanging around, six point game. Johnson shot that one off of one foot. And Johnson will rebound it. Crowd. Tennessee has gone cold. Yeah, crowd getting anxious, right? We've seen upsets. We've seen uh, Evansville over Kentucky. I know everyone's talked about that. The Florida State over Florida, not sure if that was an upset or not. Florida State coach Leonard Hamilton does a phenomenal job every year. Winthrop over St. Mary's. Uh, you know, there's been continued to have teams that have, have upset, and looks like Johnson's going out of the game limping a little bit. That was the good penetration that we talked about. And Johnson, nothing but nylon. Give the Mox credit. Playing with a lot of confidence here right now. Two possession game with under 13 minutes to go. Here's the former Vanderbilt Commodore. Matt Ryan thought about it. Fires a deep three. Tough shot. Got to make that one. 
And a bump <laughs> foul as Turner hits the deck. Crafty, one of the oldest plays in the book for young players, in particular if you're a point guard, when you have the basketball in your hand, if you change speeds, whether that's speeding up or slowing down and the defender runs into you, nine times out of ten, that foul is going to go. Advantage to the offensive player, Lamonte Turner, giving you a prime example of how to do that. And Tennessee already in the bonus. One and one for Turner. Eleven points now for the senior by way of Florence, Alabama. This is one place where he can pick it up, only shooting 62% from the line this year, where he's close to 80 for his career. Splits the freebies. The lead is seven for the balls. Could be because of the minutes he's having to play this year, too. He's another guy that's a prime example of waiting his turn. Now he's getting all the minutes he could ever want. And when you talk about Turner and Bowden, they're going to be logging serious minutes this year. Behind the back pass by Ryan. Inside Villa. And he missed it. Ferguson fouled on the floor, and that's going to go against Matt Ryan. And that would be the fourth foul on Ryan, so he's going to have to sit on the pine for a while. Oh, I, I, he might have a legitimate beef there. Fulkerson and Ryan banging bodies, and they're going to take another look at it. Our crew tonight. Byron Jarrett, the crew chief, Owen Short, and Jason Baker. So our first monitor review. Tell us what you see here, Damian. Well, right now I see Matt Ryan <laughs> rubbing his jersey on his forehead. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Oh, that's definitely an elbow above the shoulders, right? And so. Uh, Any time that there's contact above the shoulders, and particularly to the head, that's going to draw the attention of the officials. Now, and, and initially, they called the foul on Ryan. So, I mean, he's got every right to be upset with that call. We would love one of the officials to come over here and tell us exactly what the call is. But they, they, they will call it a common foul on Ryan, so he will go to the bench with four fouls. Well, he really got the... <laughs> he got the worst of that one. I mean, he takes an elbow wow. to the head, gets called for a foul, and Fulkerson gets free throws. That's a he, tough break on Matt Ryan. You'll take that any day of the week. And Fulkerson, meanwhile, starting to heat up here in this second half. He's got eight. Well, maybe they felt like Matt Ryan uh, broke the cylinder. Maybe it was the cylinder move foul uh, for Fulkerson. But without question, bad day at the office for Matt Ryan. Baseline jumper barely draws iron. There is Vila again. Sets up a three for Jean Baptiste. Bowden soaring for the rebound. Finds Turner. And a reset for the balls. Mike, the one thing I think Tennessee can improve upon, and the pace of Lamonte Turner uh, really dictates that, is when they can get a little bit more in transition. How about Fulkerson much more aggressive here in this second half? He's got 10. Yeah, I remember when Fulkerson had a breakout game his freshman year on the road at North Carolina, mm -hmm. and the expectation shot up. But you had so much dominance between Alexander, Schofield, and Grant Williams, he kind of played behind those guys. This is his year. Vila, one too many steps on the walk. 
But that stanza belonged to the 6'9 junior from Kingsport, Tennessee. John Fulkerson said, Mr. Fishback, you want some back to the basket? How about this Kevin McHale finish? I like it, John. I like it. Time now for the mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate, and it comes via E. Ponds. Well, we talked about how electric he has been since he has been in Tennessee, and another fabulous play. You talk about recovery and contesting a shot. E. Ponds is one of those guys that you see where he ranks amongst SEC blocks per game leaders. Josh Nebo, good to see him back at Texas A&M. Nick Richards, how about the breakout year he's having? Galen Smith, I think he's got a high ceiling. Anthony McLemore as well over at Auburn. Seems like Anthony McLemore has been blocking shots for about 10 years in this league. But some great shot blockers overall in this conference as we survey some SEC news and notes. The Florida Gators, again, big victory over Xavier. That was after a 20-point win over Miami. To cut down the nets in Charleston, LSU, trying to creep back into the top 25 as they defeat Rhode Island in convincing fashion. Four teams still in the SEC unbeaten. This is one of them in Tennessee, trying to make it 5-0 and oh, if they can hold on against the Mox. And they've got a pretty challenging out-of-conference slate in December. And before you know it, we'll be into conference play in early January, one of my favorite times of year. Let's see if they continue to try to keep going inside to Fulkerson. 100% in the second half with 10 points. Rest of the team only five, one of nine. Like you mentioned, Tennessee seeming to struggle to score, trying to figure out how to score. In that Washington game, I think it was beneficial that they were playing a team that played them zone. Uh, this is a team that's well coached by Coach Rick Barnes. So the zone, he's so efficient at breaking that down. And then they've got guys who can shoot it, especially when E. Pons knocks it down from the perimeter. Well, one thing you never saw Tennessee lacking last year was flow. I mean, they always had an answer. Some nights you're going to shoot the, better, the ball better than others, but you always had guys on the floor. You knew where to hit them. You knew where Schofield was going to be. You knew where Williams was going to be. Great late clock guys as well. A little bit different vibe with this offense right now, still kind of finding its identity. Sure. Well, they're learning different roles. Lamonte Turner, Jordan Bowden, Fulkerson, Eve Ponds, all in more dominant roles than they were last year, along with a lot of new faces that they're having to form and develop a chemistry with. Fulkerson picks up his second foul. It's something that he's battled throughout his career is getting into foul trouble. With expanded minutes this year, they'd like to see John Fulkerson avoid too many whistles. They need him on the floor. Shot clock at three. And a friendly bounce for Caldwell. Nine-point game as we come up on a 10-minute mark. Bowden missed the bunny. Least focus I've seen Tennessee all year. Bowden, zero points here in this second half. Chattanooga hanging around. Gene Baptiste draws the foul. You know, we talk about Tennessee defensively. Here's the time where you see Commander. You see here, look inside when you look at number three in white. He's trying to help down before Fulkerson recovers. Let it go. And as Fulkerson tries to recover, that's when you have him try to close out Drew Pember. But he's there a little bit too late, which allows the jump shot. The screen and roll, Mike, one of the most challenging plays in the game of basketball to guard, in particularly for guys that are coming out of high school as well. And that's what I mean when you talk about these are guys that haven't played together, like Kyle Alexander, Jordan Bone, Admiral Schofield, and Grant Williams had played for two or three years together. Eight point game. Fulkerson posting up. Turner kicking it out. That's the freshman Pember reeling it in. To the hands of Pons and back to Turner. Pons wants it down low. Five to shoot. Pons. And a whistle, a foul on 25, Justin Brown. 
Pons was coming right at him. And Justin Brown said, I'm not backing down, big guy. Well, this is a nice job of just trying to explode to the basket. Now got a lot of ball on that particular play. But give credit to Pons for attacking the rim. One way to get to the free throw line is to go. There's a lot of guys, Mike, who have improved throughout the conference this year. Samir Dowdy stepping out for Auburn. Kyra Lewis, even though he had a sensational year last year, I think is playing even better with more confidence. Emmanuel quickly uh, over at Kentucky has had an outstanding year. And Tyson Carter at Mississippi State having a fabulous year at the point guard position as well. Yeah, and pretty soon they're going to get Nick Weatherspoon back, which Ooh. will help that backcourt immensely in Starkville. They've already got the bigs, one of the best in the country, and Reggie Perry at Du is a great rim protector. It's a lot to like in Starkville this year. Caldwell. Bowden rips down the rebound for Tennessee. Tough shot that time for Caldwell. Just a little long. Good thing for Chattanooga is they haven't done a horrible job of getting rid of the basketball. Only seven turnovers, which has kept Tennessee out of transition. Fulkerson draws the contact. One thing you're never going to lack with John Fulkerson, effort and energy. Well, when you talk about most improved players, you have to mention John Fulkerson in, the, in that conversation. Some guys, though, and, and Tennessee's a good example, it's not even, it's not even the fact that they improved as much, uh, as much as it is they have an opportunity this year to display of more of what they can do. Jordan Bowden, John Fulkerson, uh, and Lamonte Turner, they're, they're a prime example of that. A little bit of fatigue on those free throws, both missing on the front end. So it's still single digits. The mock's not going away anytime soon. Eight and a half to play here in Knoxville. Commander whips it in the corner. Down low, Vila. And out of bounds to Chattanooga. Ryan, by the way, back on the floor right now for the Mox with those four fouls. I like the move. You know, right now, Coach Paris is saying, if we lose it here, then we're out of it. He's going to trust the veteran, Matt Ryan, to try to play this game between the ears and be smart enough not to get that fifth foul. Vila, not a great shot. Bowser's got a double-double, 11 points, 10 rebounds. So both guards for the Volunteers working on double-doubles. Turner spinning, firing, missed it. And there is Ryan on the weak side glass. Ryan squaring and firing. Shot that one right between the eyes of Bowser. Yeah, he's got the freedom. Just a tough shot. It's one of those shots where if you miss it, the coach is going to tell you to be more patient if you make it. He's going to say, good shot. Tennessee hasn't hit a field goal in four minutes. James on the offensive glass. Shot clock at seven. Turner's going to have to fire. And actually, Little pocket pass to Fulkerson, who got bailed out with one second on the shot clock. He'll be at the line when we return. 45-36, 6.59 to go in Knoxville. Tennessee up by nine, just under seven minutes to go here at Thompson Bowling Arena. Don't forget tonight at a special time of nine Eastern, we'll bring you Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regions Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron right here on the SEC Network. Mike Morgan, Damian Fish back here. We're going to see if Tennessee can improve to 5-0 on the season. 
And already a historic night for that backcourt duo that we talked about, Bowden and Turner, both getting double-doubles on the same night. They recently hit the 1,000-point plateau of their respective careers on the same night. Now they're double trouble on the same night. Well, they are, Mike, but I'm, I'm convinced that as this year goes on and teams begin to focus even more on those two guys, that the surrounding role players, whether that be Eve Pons and John Fulkerson, who really stepped up along with Josiah Jordan-James in that Washington game, are going to have to step into the forefront because teams are going to clump down on this backcourt of Lamonte Turner and Jordan Bowden. That I can guarantee you. Gene Baptiste, aggressive. And there might have been some contact there. I had a late whistle. One thing, head coach Lamont Paris was fired up. He was about to take the jacket off. The tie is sideways. That's a man that believes he did not get a call. <laughs> Look at that. That tie is, it made a right-hand turn <laughs> underneath the jacket as Fulkerson knocks it out of bounds. Well, it's kind of built up. He had Matt Ryan that was in a situation where he got elbowed and got the foul called on him. He felt like there was some goal tending. Uh, in the first half, that he felt like he didn't get called. John Fulkerson didn't worry about it. Good hustle. That's what you're looking for, and Tennessee fans appreciate that. Fans all through the Southeastern Conference appreciate it when you give everything you have. Oh. I know one thing. If Fulkerson wore a tie, it wouldn't stay on for long. <laughs> He's just too active for anything to stay in place for long. I love guys with high motor. Give me a high motor guy. Every single time that can defend, that can rebound, set screen, run the floor. Let's focus. Out of bounds. They try to hit Fulkerson with a lob pass down low. One thing, you know, you mentioned Josiah James, the talented freshman. He's been kind of quiet tonight. McDonald's All-American, immense talent. There's a three knocked down by Turner. Yeah, maybe Pretty that'll spark the crowd a little bit. He's got 15. Pretty basketball, nice execution. The out of bounds underplay by Coach Barnes. And a reach in foul on Bowden. The most dangerous man is the guy who makes the pass offensively. Lamonte Turner made the pass. And then the defender fell asleep just for a little bit, which allowed him to get open off of the screen. Shot clock under 10 for Ryan. Ryan puts it on the deck, lost the handle. Tennessee with Bowden racing in the front court. And thrown out of bounds, but deflected. Off of the box, it will be volunteer basketball. The lead swells to 14, and now Fulkerson on the alley oop. Around and down for his 14th point of the night. Outstanding execution, Justin Brown turned his head just for a split second, which allowed that tremendous pass by Lamonte Turner. Scott with a silencer, a three, and a quick timeout by the Mox. With 5.20 to go, that's a big bucket. Stop the bleeding. We talked about John Fulkerson and his ability to rebound the basketball and run the floor. Shows his little elevation as well. The Mox down 13. Well, we've talked about some of the top freshmen in the SEC. How about the top freshmen in the country? Of course, James Wiseman back on the floor for Memphis. Cole Anthony of North Carolina. Isaiah Stewart of Tennessee saw the Volunteers defeating Washington in the big SEC Pac-12 victory. And, of course, Anthony Edwards is going to be a lot of fun to watch this year in Athens and an SEC play. Tennessee picking up a big-time freshman this year, their first McDonald's All-American in nine years. And Josiah James has been kind of quiet tonight. Again, Missed almost all 
of October with a hip injury, and he's still trying to work his way back. And the one thing when we talked to Rick Barnes today at shoot around, he's, you know, he's just learning. He's just got to learn so much right now. And right. You, you talk to the great coaches in this league, like a John Calipari that's always dealing with so many freshmen. When you're out there and you're thinking, it's hard to be productive. And sometimes freshmen have to think because they're still learning so much at one time. I would agree. Uh, so many quality freshmen across this league, and we saw some across the country. Uh, I think this league can compete with any league amongst the freshmen, though. Uh, when you start, I think it's interesting when you look at Kentucky, and Coach Cal talks about the fact that they didn't know Tyler Hero was going to be as good as he was going to be last year. I think there's some freshmen in this conference that are going to be similar to that, that blossom as the year goes on. Jordan Bout blossoming, the senior now with 13. That bucket off the curl, the lead is 15. Fulkerson with a block. Fulkerson might have gotten another one. He's already got 14 points in the second half. There's the freshman James drawing the foul. Well, when you talk about teams that defend you every possession in this league, you have to look at the Tennessee Volunteers. Tremendous block and good battle. And Matt Ryan has just fouled out of this game, so a tough loss for the Mox. Their best shooter out of this game with nine points. And Tennessee trying to tack on to a 15-point lead. Better days ahead for the former Vanderbilt Commodore, Matt Ryan. The way they got Matt Ryan was very interesting. It was a three-hour conversation with head coach Lamont Paris, who got in his car and drove to Nashville. Matt Ryan noticed Coach Paris didn't eat a single thing. He just sat there and talked the whole three hours <laughs> trying to sell Matt Ryan to come to Chattanooga. The sales pitch worked. It's amazing in athletics how often players like coaches who like them. It's a simplistic mm -hmm. statement, but it's so true in this transfer generation of young people. Inside Ponds, whip around pass, great ball movement, sets up a Turner three. And a foul down low. That will go against Chattanooga. When we come back, 3.55 to go. Tennessee up by 13. A tale of two halves for the junior and of Kingsport, Tennessee, John Fulkerson. Yeah, the 6'9", 212-pound junior out of Kingsport, Tennessee, has shown us a little bit of everything this evening. You see him with his back to the basket, putting it up there with a little finger roll action. We talked about his motor, how hard he plays. And uh, I love when players are able to do this because you can either put your head down and be frustrated, or you can look at the half as a new opportunity, and that's exactly what John Fulkerson has done. Zero points in the first half, 14 in the second to go along with four rebounds, a couple of blocks, and it's almost redundant to say it because he's this way all the time, but he's been extremely active. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's been that way since high school. 113 shots blocked as a senior at the Christ School, breaking former NBA center. And current Army Ranger, Marshall Plumley single season school record. No pawns at the free throw line for a pair. One of six lefties on the Tennessee roster sinks the first one. Two for two. Largest lead for Tennessee, 15 points. Caldwell, 
catch and fire three, knocks it down. Great shot that time by A.J. Caldwell. Uh, give credit to A.J. Caldwell. No quit in this Chattanooga Mox team. And why would you expect it to be so? A lot of tradition. Mox have won 10 Southern Conference tournament titles and 10 regular season titles. And we talked about their run to the Sweet 16. So a lot of pride in this Chattanooga, Tennessee matchup tonight. Good job breaking the pressure by Tennessee. 12 point game. Clock is the ally of the Volunteers with three and change remaining. Off a curl. Turnaround jumper rims off. Game not out of reach from the box right now. Tennessee's just so stingy defensively. Gene Baptiste dribbled it off his knee. And that kind of night overall for a guy who's going to be one of the more productive players this year in the Southern Conference. But Gene Baptiste has struggled. He certainly has. And uh, that tends to happen as you make your mark in collegiate athletics when you move to the top of that scouting report as he has done. Give credit to Tennessee. Their defense has been stifling. Turn. Spinning. Throws it up with the left hand. No. Gets his own rebound. That's a deflator for Chattanooga. And that's a veteran point guard realizing the clock is his ally. Wanting to use up 20 seconds now. Out and slashing. James tapped up no. And finally scooped up by the box. Tennessee just plays intelligent, high, high basketball IQ from start to finish. They do not beat themselves. Tough shot that time by Jonathan Scott, who's got eight. I am impressed with Jonathan Scott. Would have been a huge boost off of the bench. And that'll be a walk on Ponds of Tennessee. Now there's a minute 45 left to go in this basketball game. At no point has Tennessee been able to just kind of put the nail in the coffin. They really haven't. You have to give Chattanooga a lot of credit for battling for 40 minutes. He got the whistle and he got the basket. Or did they wave it off? Caldwell just threw up a prayer after seeking the contact, but they're going to say it was on the floor. <laughs> that could have made things very interesting. Wow, that was almost like a horse shot. I'm going <laughs> to shot fake, <laughs> slip and fall off the glass. Vila, return to sender by Pons. The SEC's second leading shot block artist rejects another one. Seven blocks tonight for Tennessee. If Tennessee is fortunate enough to get this victory tonight, it will be a much bigger challenge against the Florida State Seminoles. I think they're a top 25 team. Lost it earlier in the pit. We saw what they did against Florida. But they are long, they are deep. They had to deal with some injuries. Coach Leonard Hamilton, seventh most wins in ACC his history. And Rick Barnes, the great coach that he is, will use this game, even though it's probably going to turn out to be a win. As a teaching moment, Damian, there's Absolutely. a lot of things to work on after tonight. The, the, the challenge that you have is you only have four days in between. Now, I guarantee you they have plenty to work on in practice, but some of those will be here before they know it. If Tennessee holds on, it will be their 30th consecutive win here at home, and that is the nation's longest home winning streak. Tough to do. Tough to do. Takes a lot of credit. 
A lot of credit goes to that man right there, Coach Rick Barnes, who, if he is able to get this W tonight, will be three wins away from 700. Can't say enough about the job that he has done, really everywhere he's gone. I think actually one of his best coaching jobs, you got to go all the way back to Clemson when he was kind of the play the the role of the underdog in the ACC against the mighty Tar Heels and Blue Devils and did a great job there before taking the job at Texas. Now he's got a pretty daunting task ahead of him in the month of December. Florida State, that's going to be over there in Destin, part of the Emerald Classic, either Purdue or VCU in the second round. A top 25 Memphis team, a tough trip to Cincinnati, Wisconsin. And if you go back to the SEC Big 12 Challenge in late January, they draw the Kansas Jayhawks. So Tennessee is going to be tested at a conference. There's going to be no problem with some uh, RPI, BPI builders in terms of strength of schedule. Sure, formidable schedule by any measure. And for Tennessee, they will be tested. I'm anxious to see them against a Florida State and a Memphis. I thought Memphis did a nice job of wearing Ole Miss down, even though Ole Miss uh, fought back in the second half. They lost by one point, but they really made Ole Miss play at a speed that I didn't think they really wanted to play it, even though they have a nice backcourt. I think this is what Florida State tries to do with this volunteer team in their next game. Turner and Bowden, we highlighted them at the top. They both put together double doubles tonight and are out to a victory. 58-46 the final score. Tennessee remains undefeated now at 5-0 on the season. 30th consecutive win here at home, the longest streak in all of college basketball. Damien, some thoughts? Well, for Tennessee right now, you got the W, and, and it was a win, but there is a lot that you can still work on from their offensive execution uh, to making sure that they take better care of the basketball. Even though their, their turnovers were low, uh, this is a Tennessee team that has 17 by their name, but are still a work in progress. But give that man right there, Coach Rick Bonds, a ton of credit. Uh, he has done it everywhere that he's been. And now, as we mentioned before, well on his way to 700 victories. 58-46 the final score. And again, leading the way, Fulkerson with 14. Turner, 17 points, 12 assists. Bowden, 13 points and 12 rebounds. The three veterans leading the way for Tennessee tonight as the Volunteers improve to 5-0. We'll speak to one of the players of the game when we come back from Knoxville.